Among the recommended therapies listed in the American Thoracic Society, European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, and Society of Critical Care Medicine Guidelines for the Treatment of ARDS is the use of prone positioning. In this Med Mastery lesson, we will discuss the rationale and evidence for the use of prone positioning in patients with ARDS. Prone positioning refers to the process of taking a supine patient and moving them into a position where they are lying prone in the hospital bed. Early trials of prone positioning demonstrated the ability for this maneuver to increase patient oxygenation, but most trials did not find a benefit to mortality. The potential benefits from oxygenation were thought to be due to better ventilation and perfusion matching among the pulmonary circulation and the aerated lung units, which are typically in the ventral thorax in the supine patient. In the images depicted, you can see dorsal airspace opacities in the first image. These areas are not participating in gas exchange, but due to gravity, these dependent areas of the lungs get the greatest amount of blood flow. There is a mismatch between ventilation and perfusion. In the second picture, when the patient is placed prone, there is better recruitment, though not complete recruitment, of that dependent lung area, resulting in better VQ matching in the dorsal lung zones. Other proposed mechanisms to explain the improvements noted during prone positioning include a more homogeneous distribution of tidal volume and lung pressures in the prone position and an increase in end expiratory lung volume. The prevention of atelic trauma, the repeated opening and closing of alveolar units, has been hypothesized as a benefit from this increased lung volume. So, in addition to the VQ matching and oxygen benefits of prone positioning, you may reduce ventilator-induced lung injury by utilizing this maneuver. Despite these theoretical benefits, only subgroup analysis of patients with moderate to severe ARDS demonstrated benefit in the early proning trials. In 2013, the proning severe ARDS patients randomized controlled trial, referred to as PROCEVA, demonstrated a significant mortality benefit to placing patients in prone positioning. How did this study differ from prior prone positioning trials? Patients were enrolled if they had P to F ratios less than 150, reflecting moderate to severe ARDS. They were enrolled early in the course of ARDS, and they were proned for a longer duration of time than prior studies, with a target of 16 hours per day. The mortality benefit was significant, and for every six patients placed prone, an additional life was saved. To better understand the trigger for placing a patient prone, let's examine the PROCEVA criteria for randomization. In order to make it into the study, patients needed to have a P to F ratio less than 150 on the following settings, a PEEP of 10 or greater, and an FiO2 of 60% or greater. If the P to F ratio was less than 150, but the patient was on lower ventilator settings, they were not included in the PROCEVA trial. A few limitations of the PROCEVA trial have been noted, and the most significant is that the prone and control groups were not perfectly matched. The prone group had lower illness severity scores, less need for ECMO, less need for inhaled nitric oxide, less use of vasopressors, less renal replacement therapy, and less use of glucocorticoids. This might suggest that the prone group was less sick than the control group. Prone positioning has now become mainstream and is even being actively used and investigated in patients with bilateral lung disease due to COVID-19 prior to the need for intubation and mechanical ventilation. Since prone position is so common, it's worth knowing how to enact it in practice. A team approach and a standardized checklist or process is recommended to avoid complications. Most hospitals have established comprehensive protocols so first and foremost, you should check with the facility you are practicing in for specific guidelines. In general, proning can be done in a regular hospital bed. Enough staff need to be present to make sure the turn to prone positioning is done safely. It is recommended that a respiratory therapist be present to manage the airway. There is not currently a definitive time frame for which a patient should be kept in prone position. While some COVID literature has advocated for keeping patients prone up to 48 hours, the much more common duration is 16 hours. That's taken from the PERCEVA trial. Of course, 
the longer patients are in prone position, the greater the potential for complications and the more challenging it is to provide care. The major reported complications of prone positioning from the literature are endotracheal tube obstruction and pressure injuries. Special attention needs to be made to avoid possible pressure injuries once the patient is in prone position. Some earlier studies have suggested that device loss, such as inadvertent removal of central or arterial lines, may also occur. This is less common when you have an experienced team performing the prone maneuver. There are a few circumstances in which you would not want to place your patients in the prone position. Patients with spinal instability or fractures should not be moved in this manner. Likewise, trauma patients with facial or pelvic fractures, unless repaired, should not be placed in the prone position. And patients with elevated intracranial pressure that is not controlled should not be positioned prone. Patients with obesity, open abdomens, recent abdominal or chest surgery, or patients with multiple support tubes do not have any contraindication to being placed prone. The team should proceed with caution, but prone position can and should be considered. As one of the two main recommendations in the guidelines for ARDS, every provider should now be comfortable knowing the rationale for the use of prone position in ARDS, how to implement it successfully, and what complications to look out for. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.